punishment of the present treachery, there shall surely be but how many last time when you, if you are allowed not to die, I should return to Argos as by word, for Asians will at once go home, who shall live for I am, and for the Trojans of the glory of the still of heaving Helen, the earth will rot your bones as you lie here at Troy, with your purpose not fulfilled, then shall some barget Trojan leap upon your toe and say, even for Sacramento, reach his vengeance, he brought his army in vain, he has gone home to his own land with empty ships, and has left Menelaus behind him, thus will one of them say, and may the earth then swallow me, but Menelaus reassured him and said, take heart and do not alarm the people, the arrow has not struck me in mortal part, for my hunter belt of Burnished metal first straighted, and under this my curious and the belt of mail, both the runs smiths have made me, and Agamemnon answered, I trust your Menelaus, that is, it must be may be even so, that the surgeon shall examine your wound, and lay herbs upon it to relieve your pain. He then said to Talithabius, Talithabius, El Machion, sons of the great physician, Ascalithabius, that come and see Menelaus immediately. Some Trojan or Lycian archer has wounded him with an arrow to our dismay, and to our great glory, own great glory. Talithabius did as he was told, and went about his host trying to find Machion. Presently he found standing amid the great warriors who had followed him from Trica. Later on, he went up to him and said, Son of Ascalithabius, King Agamemnon says you want to come to see Menelaus immediately. Some Trojan or Lycian archer has wounded him with an arrow to our dismay and to our, his own great glory. Thus that he speak and Machion was moved to go. They made it past three with the spreading of the host of Achaeans and went on till they came to the place where Menelaus had been wounded and was lying on sheep and scattered in a circle around him. Machion passed in the middle of the ring and that once he drew the arrow from the belt and his barbs back through the force which he pulled it out. He undid his burnished belt and beneath the curious in the belt of mail on the wrong smiths and made it then. When he had seen the wound, he wiped away the blood and applied some soothing drugs, but Chirion had given to Asclepius out of the goodwill he had borne him. While they were thus busy about Menelaus, the Trojans came forward against them, but they had put out their armor and now renewed the fight. He would not have found Agamemnon asleep nor cowardly and alone to fight, but angered rather for the fray. He let his chariot rich with bronze and panting steeds, steeds in charge of Eurydemion, son of Potrophilus, son of Harius, and bade him hold them in readiness against the time his limbs should wary go of outgoing and giving orders to so many. For he went among the rings on foot, when he saw men hasten to the front, then he stood by them and cheered them on. Our guys, he said, and not what will your wit on the set. Father Zeus will be helper of liars. Trojans have in first to break their hosts and to attack us, therefore they shall be devoured of the vultures. Say we shall take their city and carry off their wives and children in our ships. And but he angrily rebuked those who he saw shrinking, shirking, and is indisclined, disclined to fight. Our gods, he cried, cowardly miserable creatures, have you no know, shame to stand your frightened bond suit and who no longer spread over the plain, huddled together with show no fight. You are dazed and spiritless as deer. Would you wait till the Trojans reach the terms of our ship and lie on the shore to see but it's not Kronos will hold his hand over you to protect you? But did you go out giving his orders among the ranks, passing through the crowd, he came presently to the Cretans, arming with the Aeneas, who was at their head, fierce as a wild boar, while Mironis was ringing up the battalions that were in the rear Agamemnon, was glad when he saw him and spoke him fairly to Aeneas, said he I treat you a greater distinction than I do other of the Athians, whether in a war or in other things, or at a table when the princes are mixing my choices wines and the things they have each of them a fixed allowance, but your cup is kept always full like my own, that you may drink whenever you are minded. Go therefore into battle and show yourself the man you have always been to be proud to be. Idomeneus answered, answered, I will be a trusty comrade, as I promised you from the first. I would be urged on any other Aegeans that we may join. Metal at once, for the Trojans to trample upon their covenants. Death and destruction shall be theirs, seeing they have in the first to break their hooks and to attack us. The son of Atreus went on glad at heart, till he came upon two Ajaxes arming themselves and made a host of the soldiers, as when goats from the so high coast of Washes, the storm drive over the deep before the west wind, black as fishes, the offing of the mighty whirlwind draws towards him, so that he is afraid and drags his flock into a cave. Even thus did the ranks of the solar hues moves in dark mass the battle under Ajax is horrid with shield and spear. Glad was King Agamemnon when he saw them, no need he cried to give orders to such leaders of our guys as you are, for your own selves, you spear your men, on to fight at might and main. Would my father Zeus Athena Apollo that all were so minded as you are, for the sake of Priam, would this soon fall beneath our hands, we should sack it. With this he left, then and went onward to Nestor, the fat house speaker of the Pelions, who was marshalling his men and urging them on in company of the Lagon, Alistair, Chromius, Damon, and Bias, shepherd of his people. He placed his knights with his chariots and his horses in his front rank, while the front soldiers, brave men and many would he could trust, were in the rear. The cowards he drove into the middle, that they might fight whether they would or no. He gave his orders to the next warriors, bidding them hold their horses well in hand, so as to avoid confusion. And no man he said, riling on his strength or horsemanship, hit before the others and engaged singly at the Trojan somewhere. Yet to let him lie behind, or will you will, we can hear attack. But let each one he meets an enemy's chariot throw his spear from his own. This be much the best. This is how the men of old took towns and strongholds in the wise who they were reminded. Thus did the old man charge them, for he had been in many a fight, and King Agamemnon was glad. I wish he said to him that your limbs were as subtle as your strengths. As sure as your judgment is, but age, the common enemy of mankind, has laid his hand upon you. Would that it had fallen upon some other, that you were still young. And Nestor, knight of Greeny, I answered, son of Atreus, I too would gladly be the man I was when I slew mighty of Therilion, but the gods will not give us everything at one in the same time. I was then young, and now I am old. So I can go to my knights and give them counsel that which all men have a right to give. The wielding of the spear I have leave to those who are younger and stronger than myself, Agamemnon, whence his way of rejoicing presently in town, men of Thessalus, son of Hesias, towering in his place, with him were the Athenians, loud of tongue in battle near him also, Terry, cunning Odysseus, but this levied set of Herculeans round him, they had not yet heard the battle cry for the ranks of the Trojans and Achaeans, had only just begun to move, so they were standing still, waiting for some of the columns of Achaeans to attack Trojans and begin the fighting, when he saw this Agamemnon, rebuked them, and said, son of Hesias, and you others, speaking cunning heart of Gaul, why stand you here, cowering and waiting on others, you two should be old men foremost, when there is hard fighting to be done, for you are ever foremost, so sit by invitation, when we counselors of the Achaeans are holding the feast, you are glad enough to take your fill of roast meats and to drink wine as long as you please, for as now you would not care, though you saw in ten columns of Achaeans and that enemy in front of you. Odysseus glared at him and answered, Son of Atreus, what are you talking about? How can you say, well, we are slack? When the Achaeans are in full fight with the Trojans, you shall see if you care to do so. At the father of Telemachus, which will advance all the foremost of them, you are talking idly. When Agamemnon saw that Odysseus was angry,
and presently he saw the son of Tedious and noble Adamant, sending on his spiritual forces of Sanfernandas.